Okay, I'm out here. I scored a half inch piece of steel at the metals outlet. And so I've got it pretty much laid out where I want it. I want to cut this out and pretty much weld it on there. So I had it kind of just standing up next to the frame, sitting on the buckets. And I got some measurements. I want to go ahead and get it cut right now. So that's what I'm working on right now. Oh, that's hot. Okay, I'm trying to get this gap to close up here. So instead of trying to take the thing, the plate down, I'm just gonna bring the truck up, I think. I'm just wondering if it's still too, too low to the ground. That looks pretty good right there. That looks pretty good right there. What do you all think? And then I want to take these pieces and put here, weld that in. Thirteen feet is right there. Okay, let me show you where I'm at right here. So this is my two by three 11 gauge or quarter inch, I mean um, eighth inch tubing here. And I, li I really like this height, but I don't like how it's kind of sitting right here. When I 
lay it down like this, I really like how that's sitting in there. But now I'm two an inch too thin. So I made the tough call to get some three by three tubing. And so I can get my, get my height right. And I can get laying in there really nicely. So now is not the time to be cheaping out on this stuff. So I really like the way that sits in there and my height is nice and good. So let me show you what that's gonna look like. Okay, so that is a really, really solid foundation I think on, on ways to build. The other thing is, if you take a look here, My height off the wheels right there is good. So I have about two inches or so, two and a half maybe before the bump stop right there. And I've got four inches off the tire. So even if this thing does squat down, it'll hit the bump stop before it hits the bed. So that is a, a much more secure and stable, I think, foundation with those three by three tubes. tubes. I've been cutting a few things here. It's really, really hot out. And I did want to mention, if you're like me and you enjoy watching YouTube, then you'll be sure to put on safety glasses when you're doing stuff like this. Make sure you're protecting your eyes. Keep watching YouTube. What I'm doing over here is just kind of like trying to ease this angle here. And I just want something that looks good is all. So I'm just using a straight edge. I've got a framing square clamped right here. And so these two pieces are square. And I'm just gonna freehand cut this angle that I just marked. I also have this piece supported with an adjustable roller there. And on the other side, I've got a piece of flat stock clamped on here and this piece is just sitting right here. So that's just kind of sitting right in place right there. And I have this little magnetic square holding it in place too.
for this flatbed design, I looked at a few different things and pretty much came up with just a flatbed with the angling toward the front. But another consideration along with the design is what materials you're going to use. And so I considered using C-channel and I had a couple pieces like scrap pieces of C-channel around the shop and I held them up and stuff. And I, I just didn't really like the way they were sitting and all that. So I ended up going with two by three tubing. And this is that eighth inch, that 11 gauge wall thickness. And so this is not really a place you want to start going super, super cheap or flimsy. And this, I, I'm really happy looking back on it that I used the steel tubing instead of C-channel. And you can see here, I'm starting to get things, some of these cross members put in and things are coming together. I'm also getting some grinding done here. And so just getting this all together was, was pretty cool and seeing how everything's gonna go together. I just came off a job and I've been tinkering around with this a little bit. It's still really hot out here and I just haven't filmed it. So this is pretty much where I'm at and I wanted to bring you guys along to see. So what I'm working on right now is I just wanna give some more surface area to weld to. So I'm gonna drop these little pieces in here and weld them in as well. Right there and there. Since I'm in here and building a flatbed, I decided to put a gooseneck hitch in here. And so I took those three by three tubes, a couple scrap pieces there, and I went across three of the cross members. And then I'm just building a little box around the gooseneck plate that I bought. And so I don't own a gooseneck trailer and I figured this might be a good chance to get one and try it out and just why not? If you're gonna build, go through all the trouble to build this, this bed and everything, then why not go ahead and put a flat uh, gooseneck hitch in here and then if i ever get one in the future i'll have the capability to tow it one of my other pickup trucks has a gooseneck hitch in it already that i've purchased and it was already there so that's what i'm working on here i'm out here today and i'm working on this plate for my hitch back here so what i've done is i've just traced out the frame and i'm just trying to get this thing pretty much in place today and maybe get the uh, tube in there as well. So that's what I'm working on right now. And I could cut this with my metal cutting saw, but I thought I would try the plasma cutter just to see how it did. So here we go. This plasma cutter is definitely not meant for extreme usage or even moderate usage. It overheats right away. So I am cutting half inch steel, but I maybe got, what, 10 inches, if that, with it before it overheated. So now it'll take, I don't know how long to cool down, but that's where I'm at. My first design of this hitch plate just had it resting against the frame and it was pretty much like a T-joint, just the, the thing was resting up against the, the frame and you run a bead of, of weld through there. And I thought about it for quite a while and I decided that I wanted to get this thing a little bit more service area for welding. And so what I decided to do was to actually trace out the frame, cut it out and then slide the hitch into the frame. And then I could weld it on the front and the back side and I can also add in a couple of gussets in here. So just deciding to get this thing stuck in here a little bit more more, more heavy duty or more uh, tightly, I think, is gonna go a long way to making a really solid hitch. I'm underneath here, and I'm just trying to lay out where I want my receiver tube to go. somewhere along there should 
should be pretty good and I want to make sure to center it but I just wanted to get a quick and dirty height on it so I can cut out my hole and be working on that
I'm back out here this morning and I'm just getting my square receiver tube placed and about to tack it in place and get it welded. So it's looking really good. Everything is real square, really well centered, all that good stuff. It's worth noting that when you go to weld something like this that you've got positioned exactly where you want it, it's always a good idea to just tack it in place first. So you see me starting out at one corner here with a little bit of a tack, and then I'm gonna go to the opposite corner and put in a tack, and that is just going to secure the piece before you fully weld it, because when you start to fully weld it, you're putting so much heat into it that you could warp it or, or bend it or whatever. And so getting it tacked in place on all four corners is important to hold it in place while you do your full welding. Adding a gusset on both sides of this hitch down here I think is gonna really stiffen things up. And the more structural pieces you can put in here, the better for a hitch like this. So not only is the hitch really, really well welded into the frame, but I've got a couple of supports across it. I've got that piece of C-channel across the bottom, and then I've got these two gussets going in on the bottom sides here. And that's gonna tie it into the frame, give it some stiffness, everything.
the puppy's hot. Check it out. That was a lot faster than hole, hole sawing that thing. Whew, that thing is hot. And I think I did a pretty good job. Let's take a closer look. Usually you don't get the precision with the plasma cutter like that. But I think that turned out pretty nicely. The question is if the plug will fit in there. I think it will though. Would be nice to get it pretty close to them. This template is designed for your particular gun here, your plasma cutter gun. And the distance, the offset right there should be the same. So when you order this, you have to know which gun you have. This is a Lincoln, I think it's an LC40. But anyway, you can select which one you need. Okay, well there's one. Let that cool off for a second and then I'll try it out. Previously when I've cut out these ovals, I've just hand, like, just free handed it. And I never seem to get it right. So I'm interested to see how this is going to work out. These little grommets are pretty sweet. They just hold the, the light in there. Oh yeah, see look at that. That fits really nice. And it's easy too. Sometimes mine, I have to really, really shove them in there and it's not cool, but that's awesome. So I'm not very good yet at running this thing around here. You wouldn't think it would be that hard, but I, maybe I should have done the smooth side instead of having these diamond plate treads to deal with. But all I'm doing now is just trying to work it out. So this edge here, I had a long straight with this. So my 
distance this way is covered. Next, I wanna try to figure out how far I want them spaced apart from each other. And so to do that, I've got a center line here. I just did whatever inches across there. I'm just gonna look from my center line there and just eyeball whatever looks good. <clears throat> and then I'll use the same distance for the, the third one, the reverse light. Okay, here goes our second one. Okay, that one went a lot better. I turned up the plasma cutter a little bit. The problem with my plasma cutter is it overheats like instantly. So I try to keep it as low as possible, but that was really a lot better.
I got the drive shaft back from the drive shaft place and I got it connected back up there. And then I've got this carrier bearing and bracket just kind of hanging in here loosely. And then I've got it pushed up into the spline there. So that is where I am at with this. And I think I've just been kind of messing with it a little bit, but I think it's going to work. So I also need to spin that U joint or whatever you call that on the differential to get it to line up to the axle because I've been, I moved the axle, the rear axle forward and that thing spun a little bit. So let me get this thing in the air so it spins freely. Okay, as far as getting under this, it's not too bad. The wheels are still on it. If it falls off the jacket, it'll just land on the, on the ground. But I do have the front wheels chalked, just in case. I was really worried about this drive shaft situation and I called a local place and they told me how to measure it and I measured it and I didn't quite measure it the way they wanted to but I took a picture of where I measured from and they did whatever it is they do and boom it works. So they put two new, two new shafts in here, I think they're called, and used the ends and put some new U-joints in as well. So that was pretty cool. It was definitely a little bit of a unknown for me. I've never messed with a drive shaft before. And I could have pulled this bed off before I put this in, but it, the bed's actually giving me some shade under here. Okay, I think the last thing I... Oh, the other thing they did is they put some indicators on here because apparently when they, bal they balance it as one piece and so the whole thing gets has to be put back together the same way. So... Anyway, now I've just got to tighten this up and I'll be in good shape. Okay, I'm ready to see if this thing will move. And I know I've been complaining about the heat, so let's see just how hot this is. 138.2 degrees. No, 137.8 degrees. It's hot. So working out here in the heat is definitely not fun, and it's a little bit more shady over here. So the sun just went behind a cloud. I may also back it in the garage here. That might be the best bet.
Okay, I just pulled the bed off and I did that because I have to bleed the brakes and I need to get my wiring all back in place. So you see I've got quite a bit extra over there. And so I figured it'd be easier to get the bed off of here. The other thing I need to do is turn it upside down and finish welding everything from the bottom side. So there's a shot of the new drive shaft. So that's, that's pretty exciting because now hopefully once I get the, the brakes bled, it'll drive again. And so that'll be nice to be able to move it, move it around. And I may just back it in the garage right there, but we'll see. But let me get these brakes done and see if I can get this thing movable again. Right before this, I went to start the truck and it started and then died instantly. And then it wouldn't start. It would turn over just fine. So I called my friend Carson, the mechanic, and the first thing he said is, did you hook your grounds all back up? And I said, well, no, I didn't. I'm just jumping in, jumping way ahead of the game. He said, no, 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 get all your grounds hooked back up. Your fuel pump is probably hooked to one of these grounds. And so what I'm working on here is getting the grounds hooked up on this wiring harness. And what ended up happening is got the grounds hooked up. That worked. The truck started. I was pushing in on the brakes to see if the brakes had, were, were going to be strong. And I threw it in reverse and gave it some gas while hitting the brake. And in that tiny instant, that wiring harness got wrapped around that drive shaft and ripped a bunch of stuff out. It didn't, it could have been a lot worse, but it really screwed me up big time. And so all that got edited out and we're going to go into wiring in the brake harness. I will go ahead and end this video here, but I wanted to show you where I'm at. This is where I'm at today. So this has been a big, big project and I'll be getting to the next segment of the series pretty quickly, hopefully. So I definitely appreciate you all watching. Thank you all again for watching. And if you think this video is worth it, let YouTube know by giving it a like and a comment. That lets YouTube know that this video is worth watching and it pushes it out to others. It's also a way you can support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. You can also check the links to support the channel. See you on the next one.